Ms. Falzon, members of the family of Maria Stella Ajus, esteemed colleagues, students, guests, friends, welcome. Today marks the International Day of the Midwife, a day where the world honors the midwives' work and promotes awareness on their importance in providing crucial care to mothers and their newborns. It is also a chance for us to recognize their efforts towards making the world a better place. When the Adjus Muscat family approached us about donating treasured memorabilia belonging to a practicing midwife from an almost bygone era, it rekindled this wish that I had for a long time to build a small heritage corner to shed light on the identity, spirit and history of our professions in Malta and of our faculty, the Faculty of Health Sciences. I remember way back in the 1980s, 1980s as a student of physiotherapy, there were a couple of old short-wave diathermy machines in our practice lab at the Institute of Healthcare at St. Luke's Hospital huge things. They look like uh, the, uh, for people who know, the Daleks from Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> they were stored there unused in a corner and I used to fiddle with the knobs and switches at the time, you know, being a student and such. I had found out that they, that they were donated by the Red Cross in the 60s. Um, when they disappeared, I tried to trace them for a while, but then life took over. But I always remembered feeling what a pity that was, losing a piece of Maltese professional history. And so here we are. Our professions are built on research, evidence, culture, tradition, on patient needs, expectations and satisfaction, and on the day-to-day -day duties that each health profession, professional dedicates to their practice. So we deserve this little corner. We Every person that walks through that door, that slams shut with the most annoying noise, I must admit, <laughs> deserves to be reminded that there were people who came before us who paved the way to what we are today. And for that, we need to honor them. So today, we celebrate the International Day of the Midwife. We celebrate the professional life of Miss Maria Stella Ajus and we celebrate and acknowledge the foundations that our professions were built on. Before I conclude, allow me to convey my gratitude to our benefactors, particularly Dr. Hugo Arjus Muscat, who donated the precious items we are about to see, to my colleagues and friends at the faculty and beyond, who worked efficiently to make this ceremony possible, together with our main collaborator for the day, Metropolis Pharma, suppliers of Uriage. So with that, I thank you for being here. Thank you. I would now like to invite uh, Dr. Josephine Attard, who is the head of the department of uh, midwifery. Thank you very much. Well, good afternoon. It feels great to be back meeting for events like this after such a long break. At least we have started. Colleagues, on behalf of the Department of Midwifery, I welcome you to this special unveiling ceremony of the Midwifery Memorabilia. This event will mark the birth and future growth into the Faculty of Sciences Memorabilia. This ceremony to today as has already been introduced by the Dean, is the International Day of the Midwife. Celebrated globally, this year's theme being 100 years of progress. Obviously, the midwifery department is very, very grateful to the family of the late midwife Maria Stella Jews, Nee Muscat, who donated items of her midwifery legacy something about this midwife. Maria Stella was born in Hamrun on the 8th of October in 1904. She married Joseph, a draftsman, in 1930 and had four sons. She must have been very, very busy. 
Anthony, Paul, Edwin, and Thomas. In 1937, Maria Stella decided to follow a university course to become a midwife. The teaching was based at the Central Hospital in Floriana. This was Malta's main hospital at the time, which was located in the building that is presently the police headquarters. The midwifery course was delivered by faculty of the Royal University of Malta over three years. After successful completion of the course, on 3rd July 1940, Maria Stella was awarded a diploma in obstetrics by the Royal University of Malta. And shortly after, the warrant to practice midwifery awarded by Sir William Doby, Governor of Malta in those days. Now, in the previous month, Maria's, of Maria Stella's award, Italy and the other Axis powers had declared war on Malta and bombing raids were taking place. This meant that the initial years of Maria Stella's midwifery career between 1940 and 1943 were practiced under difficult wartime conditions. Indeed, we can say that for her, it was a truly baptism of fire into the profession. Her practice was centered in her hometown of Hamroun. As her reputation grew, her practice flourished. She attended to women not only in Hamroun, but nearby in Marsa, and also further afield in Santa Venera, Ormi, Gzira, Pieta, Imsida, and even Attar, Birkirkar, and Zabuch. Her only surviving son, Thomas Ajus, recently recalled that typically a car was sent to pick her up and to take her to the address where her midwifery services were needed. Midwives were skilled in attending to pregnancy and birth and could recognize and refer women to doctors and hospital when this became necessary. In complicated cases, she would call upon the services of the obstetrician. Her grandson, Hugo, who is present here, Hugo Ajus Muscat, recalls that Dr. Oscar Zamit was one of the specialists who, with whom she worked most closely. The exhibits in the memorabilia, which we're going to see in a couple of more minutes, recall many episodes and experiences of midwifery practice of the past. We will recognize that some aspects of midwifery care and equipment have changed over the years, offering better outcomes. Yet, when we see the memorabilia, we have to remember that the longer you look back, the further you can look forward. These are the words of Winston Churchill, the renowned British statesman, uh, which he said in 1944. Indeed, looking back, insightful lessons and honest reflections might help us predict the future direction of midwifery. The memorabilia recall the spirit of midwifery and serves as an inspiration to go back to our roots for a desired change to reclaim a sustainable and efficient, ef efficient quality maternity service closer to home, that is, the community. The northern countries and in other parts of the globe provide positive examples of strong midwifery practice. Recognizing that one model of maternity care provider does not fit all women, midwives are the primary care providers of women-centered care, 
characterized by a reciprocal trustful relationship within a positive birthing atmosphere. The experience of several European countries adopting midwifery models of maternity care indicate that midwifery can indeed make a real difference to the lives of women and infants. Being closer to the pregnant woman from the initial stages of pregnancy, through pregnancy, birth and the postnatal period, allies the overwhelming fear of the unknown, which makes mothers fearful, worried and anxious in their journey to motherhood. Research tells us that fear of the unknown hinders the process of birth. Midwives should have a visible, a sound visible place in the community setting where women can choose to access them at first point of contact, providing a service focused on continuity of care and carer and safer care with professionals working across boundaries to provide and commission maternity services that support personalization, safety and choice with access to specialist care whenever needed. This will ensure more positive, magnificent birth experiences of families for families which safeguards society at large. Thank you. <laughs> and now I invite um, Dr. Rugo Ajus Muscat to uh, deliver his speech, please. Thank you. Prorector, Dean, Head of Department, colleagues, friends and guests. Thank you for the invitation to say a few words on behalf of the family of Maria Stella Ajus, whose display of midwifery memorabilia is being unveiled today. To our family, she was Nanna Stella. She was only five feet tall and often reminded us less sense of flesh can zar. We have many happy memories of childhood visits to her and Nanu Joe at their home in Hamroon. We particularly enjoyed visiting during festa time when we would throw a lot of shredded paper from the second floor balcony onto the passing procession and then climb up to the rooftop to watch the fireworks. I often visited the music room to play on Nanna's piano under the watchful gaze of portraits of great composers Nanna Stella indeed was an accomplished pianist and one of my first music teachers. Playing pieces for four hands with her was sheer delight. At the age of five, I became aware that Nanna Stella wasn't just a jovial grandmother. She turned up at night at our home in Valletta, looking very serious, to help my mother deliver my younger sister, Lucienne. Over time, I learned about her past career as a community midwife. While walking with her in the streets of Hamroon, she often received friendly greetings from persons who recognized her as Il Maestra. It became clear that she had delivered many people in the neighborhood. At home, she was a constant source of medical advice. She used to insist that we regularly take fish oil capsules, which smelled obnoxious, and the dose of Wincarnis tonic, which tasted pretty good to, thanks to its significant alcohol content. <laughs> the years flew by. When I started pursuing a medical career, we often chatted on health-related matters. My only regret is that I didn't ask her for more details about her past midwifery practice. Indeed, she never boasted about her achievements, which were remarkable considering that she started her midwifery practice uh, at the age of 35 in wartime conditions over and above protecting and providing for four young sons. In 1944, as peace returned to Malta, the baby boom started, so her work-related challenges changed in nature. 
her youngest son, Uncle Tom, whose son Roderick is here with us, has told me that she would often spend whole nights out of the house attending women in labor. Apart from keeping her personal delivery records, she would enter the details of the children she had delivered in a copybook, Petats Bil Malti, and send Uncle Tom with it to the police station to notify the birds to the authorities. Uncle Tom also used to accompany her to church for the baptisms of the children she had delivered. She invariably attended these baptisms since they were held as soon as possible after the birth while the mother was still recovering at home. Her records show that in some cases a family doctor or an obstetrician was in attendance during the birth, especially in high-risk cases. And as Dr. Attart already said, Nana Stella had a strong working relationship with Professor Oscar Zamit. There was great mutual respect between them. Here I have a small token of that respect, a postcard that shows St. Paul's Cathedral, in London that I found among Nana's personal items, a postcard that Professor Zamit sent while visiting London in April 1954, the same year that he was appointed Professor of Midwifery at the University of Malta. It says, Happy Easter to you all, O Zamit, and is simply addressed, Midwife S. Ajus, St. Joseph Road, Hamroon, Malta. Now, as you may know, St. Joseph High Road is a very long road. <laughs> Yet, Professor Zami didn't write a house number. Clearly, the postman knew who midwife S. Ajus was. By the end of the 60s, Nana Stella had retired fully from midwifery and focused entirely on her family, including 11 grandchildren. She did meet her first great-grandchild, Matthew, my, uh, my firstborn son. And here you might be hearing her great-great-great-grandchild, <laughs> uh, Sarah. Um, who is my son Simon's uh, um, daughter. After Nanu Joe died in 1978, she continued living on her own in their Hamroon home. She passed away in 1992, aged 87. My father preserved the family as home as well as he could until he too passed away four years ago. It was then that my sister Lucien, my wife Cecilia, who is also here, and I went through Nanna Stella's remaining personal effects and collected the various items that the Faculty of Health Sciences is now going to exhibit, illustrating aspects of her midwifery career. Nana Stella lived a full life. She succeeded in developing and applying her scientific and artistic talents, while also taking care of her family and home. May we all have the courage and strength to fulfill our potential as much as she did. Our thanks go to Dr. Lungar Mifsud, Dr. Attart, and all the others who have driven this initiative. Thank you for your attention. And now we will have the address of Professor Cacciatolo, the Pro-Rector of the University of Malta. Thank, Thank you. Very much. <coughs> Good afternoon. I First of all, it's a pleasure for me to be here and to see so many friendly faces. Uh, I'd like to thank the Dean for inviting me to, to say a few words, and I promise they will be a few words. <coughs> um, it's a double pleasure for me to be with you all on the International Day of the Mid Midwife. The first, the first of the pleasures is an, it's an honor for me to help celebrate an act of generosity and kindness. I have to thank Dr. Ugo Jos Muscat for donation of Momarablia, belonging to Maria Stella Jus, who practiced as a midwife and died 30 years ago. I would like also to thank you on behalf of the University of Malta and also on behalf of the Alma Mater, which is the Alma Mater for both of us. The second pleasure is that it's good to be here. It's good to be at the Faculty of Health Sciences. I've got a long association with the Faculty of Health Sciences and the Institute of Healthcare before that. So it's a pleasure for me to be here. <coughs> but we also celebrate, it's an excuse to celebrate the International Day of the Midwife. As you said, is the centenary 
of the International Confederation of Midwives. It started as in the International Midwives Union a hundred years ago in Belgium. And it is fit and proper to honor midwives on their international day and every day. It was first a midwife who held, we don't think about this, but it was first a midwife who held most of us and skillfully delivered us into this world. <laughs> Midwifery is also one of the oldest professions. And in every community, however ancient and primitive, the midwife features. Then, as now, there were wise women. Women with special knowledge, special experience, and special skills. Much respect is owed to midwives across all societies, because they assist other women when they are most vulnerable. They are a pillar of strength when women are going through emotionally charged times. And also, they are a very valuable source of practical woman-to-woman -woman advice. Hugo mentioned the word maestra, which I had not put in my text. But maestra is the term that we call the midwife. And indeed, how appropriate this is. The, the mistress, mistress, in a, you know, and you understand the sense, maestra. Um, in the Dominican order, for example, el maestro, the maestro is a very senior priest who has reached high academic rank. And that says a lot that, that, uh, about the honor that, that the Maltese community um, delivers to our maestra. I'd like to end on a personal note. And it is regarding my professional brush with midwives, not personal brush with midwives, but pers professional brush. <laughs> <laughs> <They are laughs> and the brush, the brush <laughs> brings very happy memories, really. I was then a very junior, and I must say very naive doctor. And then I spent, I was a houseman, and I uh, had spent three months doing obstetrics. I must say that I learned much more from midwives than I've learned from my seniors and from my consultants. Sorry, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you'll understand. Probably it happened because they were, they were, they taught you informally, and I still remember names of midwives who were extremely kind to me, who pointed me in the right direction. Don't do that, or do this, or do this that way. And, and I'm truly grateful for, for their kindness, really. And I recall, I certainly recall my midwife teachers with fondness, because they, teached, that they shared their knowledge freely with me and very competently taught me their skills without pomposity or fuss. I said, I'll say a few words, and I come to the end. I thank you all once again for having me amongst you on this special day. I'm truly grateful. Uh, now I think the time has come to unveil um, our memorabilia and then we view the exhibits and they, they speak a lot, you know, about our past and maybe also our future, where we want to go. Right? So, let's see. Uh -huh. That's right. Ashinkella. <laughs> they started peeping. Okay, so we draw it here. Thank you, thank you all, thank you all for, for being here. Ob obviously, now is the opportunity uh, for you to have a look at uh, uh, the, this uh, showcase of uh, history of the history of uh, midwifery in Malta, but also the opportunity for how to have some refreshments, which uh, um, I hope will uh, make this uh, ceremony at, at, uh, as no, no, I was going to say unforgettable, it's a bit too much, no? But hope you enjoy it.
Thank you all. Please Thank you. approach. I would like to point out some items. For example, this yellow band, which says midwife, that she used to wear, if I'm not mistaken, to go out during the night because of the curfew and, and the bombing. We have here her uh, midwifery certificate, diploma, yeah, and her, you know, warrant. But what I admire, mo she has, you know, all these documents, is that we have the picture here of Maria Stella, but she was very meticulous. I mean, if you don't know, if you look at her handwriting, her notes and her copybooks, they are impeccable. Uh, um, uh, so, and then we have the scale, obviously they use, and uh, can I reveal the secret? <laughs> <laughs> or you tell them. <laughs> Um, Dr. Rugo was weighed on the scale. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, it's, it's very interesting. For example, I'm sure you remember of a Fortan. So this was uh, of a Fortan. It's, it's a drug we, we don't use anymore for, for quite some time. But it was uh, probably some analgesic for labor. We still have some files there. And uh, how we see uh, how she cared, how she cared for the cord, all sorts of things there. You know how she tied the cord, and uh, also, for example, we have that. That is uh, for an enema. So the induction in those days was a simple enema, hot enema, to oh, induce so labor. Hot, so enema. Enema to and induce plus labor. Plus and plus the oil. Today we have Don't worry. other well, things. We used to do it back in the 80s. They still got a high, hot, <laughs> soapy enema. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, My wife was amazed at how much ah. bubbles she could actually <laughs> make. <laughs> A douching uh, equipment, which they used to uh, use um, to clean the vagina, and, and probably one way of thinking of contraception, maybe. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> okay, so yes, and that's the plug it, she used to have on the door, you know, um, showing that, th that there is the midwife there. Anyway, thank you, thank you very, very much because this really, uh, when you look at it, and for us, it speaks a lot of, of the practice um, and obviously recognize the, 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 the work of the midwife, even in particularly difficult times like war. Thank you very much. So, please stay and mingle. Okay. Thank you. We have food. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh.